In this video, we want to consider how resonance can affect the uh, chemical properties of a molecule. Uh, suppose we have just a generic uh, alcohol like this. It is possible to form the aloxide ion like this, so it loses a proton. And there's some solvation energy for this, but alcohols certainly are not acidic. And in fact, the pKa for alcohols is like around 16. Now let's compare and contrast to, say, a generic carboxylic acid. like this, and OK. The carbon with the double bond is going to be sp2 hybridized. Each of the uh, oxygen atoms are also sp2 hybridized, but they're hybridized in different ways. For this oxygen atom. Here we have the orbital diagram. And then this 2s orbital merges with these two p orbitals that hybridize to form three sp2 molecular orbitals. And this p orbital is, remains unhybridized. So we can form two bonds here, two sigma bonds. And that's what happens here. One is with carbon. One is with hydrogen. And then there's two lone pair of electrons left over, pi electrons and sp2 electrons. So this could be the sp2. And this could be the pi electron. Now, for this carbon, or for this oxygen here, it also is sp2 hybridized, but it does it in a different way. Here again, this is the orbital diagram for oxygen. And let's say now that the s orbital and these two p orbitals merge together. Here, we were doing it, the s orbital, and p orbitals that each have a single p electron. Now we're doing it with one of the p orbitals that has a paired electron. So we're going to merge this, this, and this to give us three molecular sp2 orbitals, and then we have an unhybridized p orbital left over that has a single electron. So this is available to form a sigma bond. This is available to form a pi bond. And that's what we have here in the carbonyl group, the single sigma bond and the pi bond. So for here then, for the carbonyl oxygen, both unpaired electrons, they are each sp2 electrons. With the hydroxyl oxygen, two unshared pair of electrons, one is sp2 and one is a pi. Now, what can happen here, let's just draw this down here, same structure. Actually, let's make it a little bit bigger. Our generic carboxylic acid. K 
can there be any resonance stabilization for it? And yes, there can. Because here we have these pi electrons. Here we have this pi bond. What can happen is this, we can imagine this oxygen atom. Here they're sharing a pair of pi electrons. Both of them can go to this oxygen atom. Leaving carbon then deficient of an electron. But here we have these lone pair of p orbital electrons. These can now move in to form a bond with carbon. So we could write this type of Lewis structure This oxygen literally stole an electron from carbon. So it's like this, where again, these are sp2 electrons here, just like they were before, and now it has a pair of pi electrons, which is stole from the carbon and kept for itself. But then we have this double bond that forms. Oxygen is sharing both electrons, so this has a positive charge. Carbon has no charge. It initially lost an electron that it was sharing with this oxygen, but it gained an electron back that it had from now from this oxygen. So that has no charge. So there is some resonance stabilization for the carboxylic acid itself. It's not a real good one. Um, here we have separation of charges. This electronegative oxygen has a positive charge on it. But there is some uh, electron stabilization, which means that that would stabilize this, so it wouldn't be very reactive. But let's see what happens now. when it loses this proton. I'll just say minus H plus. So now we're going to have the anion. like this. So with the anion now, here originally in the original compound we had these sp2 electrons and a pi and the pi electrons. Here sp2, these are sp2 electrons because this was an sp2 bond. It lost the proton here. It keeps the electron from the hydrogen. So these are each sp2 electrons. This is a pi electron here. So let's consider now resonance stabilization for the resulting. Let's get this in better focus. Okay, let's examine this again. We lost the proton, so we have this. Originally, when the we retained the proton in the original structure. We had sp2 bond, an sp2 bond, and an sp2 unshared pair of electrons, and a pi unshared pair of electrons. We demonstrated that earlier in the uh, orbital diagram for this sp2 hybridized oxygen atom. Now it loses this, the proton. So here it has sp2 electrons, sp2 electrons, and the pi electron here, the, the unshared pair of pi electrons. This originally was an sp2 bond. It lost the proton, so it has these unshared pair of sp2 electrons. Here and here, here's the unshared pair of pi electrons. Now 
for the anion, what kind of um, Lewis structures can we draw for it? So we have this. Now remember, this carbonyl oxygen, it has unshared pair of electrons, but these are both sp2 unshared electrons. And we have this, I'm just going to put in now, just to designate the pi, the unshared pi electrons. So this would be the anion. Now notice what can happen. The oxygen and the carbon are sharing a pair of electrons. Suppose the oxygen keeps both of them. Here's an unshared pair of pi electrons. This donates them. So the resulting structure, the resulting Lewis structure, is This has a negative charge and an unshared pair of pi electrons because it swiped the, the pi electron from the carbon and kept both of them. This donates the pair. So this lone electron pair is now being shared. So this had a negative charge. It gave up both electrons. That would normally give it a positive charge, but it had a negative charge to begin with. So that has no charge on it. So with the anion, notice what happens. There is no charge separation like we had with the original molecule. Instead, what we have is charge dispersion. Here the negative charge was here. Now it's over here. And also notice that these are symmetrical. double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, as if we just took this and just rotated it about that single bond there. So these are symmetrical structures. So the anion has a much better resonance stabilized system compared to the acid itself. So therefore, this is highly motivated to get rid of that proton to form the anion and form this much better resonance stabilized system. And in fact, for um, carboxylic acids, they have a pKa of around 4 to 5, much, much higher say when compared to an alcohol when there is no resonance stabilization of the oxygen. In fact, here this is an sp3 oxygen and it's an sp3 anion here. Here when we form the anion we have this marvelous resonance system set up so that the carboxylic acid is highly motivated to get rid of that proton form the anion where we can have the superior resonance. Now, in terms of trying to describe this with a better picture, what we have is carbon, oxygen, oxygen. They all have uh, p orbitals. Originally, we had carbon and the oxygen, p orbital sharing an electron. And then right here, then we have the anion that has an unshared pair of pi electrons. That's what this is. And then we have the carbon and the oxygen. Originally, these completely overlap, these pi orbitals in a double bond. Now, in the anion, they don't have that. What happens instead is these one, two, three, four 
high electrons are shared amongst these three atoms, the two oxygen atoms and the carbon atom. So again, we have that electron delocalization. We can think of this as like an electron cloud, and this electron cloud then is spread out over all three atoms. And again, that's a very strong stabilizing effect for our carboxylic anion. But here, we're drawing the Lewis structures this situation, the way we depict it with the Lewis structures is, we look at it, here is our original compound, here we have a pi bond, here we have an unshared pair of lone pi electrons, and what we do is we try to imagine different ways that we can shuffle the pi electrons. All other bonds remain the same, they're unchanged, so we could imagine Okay, the oxygen keeps both electrons, giving it a negative charge. This negatively charged oxygen can then donate its electron pair to form the double bond here. So we have these two different Lewis structures. We have a charge dispersion instead of a charge separation as what would exist for the protonated part of carboxylic acid. This is much better, charge dispersion, and we have the symmetry. So that is why, indeed, that carboxylic acid has such strong acidic properties. But now, let's go back to the protonated form of carboxylic acid, the way we began. Here we have unshared electron pairs. And here we have unshared electron pairs. With all these unshared electron pairs, is it possible to protonate this? In other words, is it possible to put a proton here, 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 so that carboxylic acid could sort of function as a base? If we did that, how would that affect the resonant structures? We will examine that in the next video, and we'll be surprised to see that carboxylic acid can also have some of the properties of a base because of these unshared electron pairs. So we'll look at what happens if we protonate them, and what sort of resonant structures will be generated as a result of that, but that we'll examine then in the next video.